today because there's an experiment involved. But first, we've got an exclusive just for you. To tell us more about Hooke's Law, it's the one and only Professor Brian Cox. Now, forces don't just change the way that things move, they can also change the shape of things. And a good example of that is Hooke's Law. It says that if you apply a force to a spring, then the force stretches the spring. And if you don't stretch it too much, Hooke's Law says that the amount of force you apply is proportional to the stretch. So that means that if you apply twice the force, you get twice the stretch. If you apply three times the force, you get three times the stretch. Now, that works until you stretch the spring too much. Now, you probably know what happens if you overstretch a string. It won't come back to its original shape, its original length. Why is that? It's actually quite a, a nice and deep question with a nice and deep answer. It's because the spring is made up of lots of molecules that are all stuck together with their own little forces between them. And if you overstretch the spring, you can break those bonds for good. They don't come back when you let go. And so the spring doesn't come back to its original length. So Hooke's law only applies if you keep all those bonds between the molecules together. That is to say, if you don't overstretch the spring. A big thank you to Professor Brian Cox. All right, what is going on here, Mr. Mycock? What have I got to do next? OK, Gethin, now we know a bit about Hooke's Law, this experiment is going to show it in action. Uh, do you want to do the big reveal? Can't wait, here we go. Here it is. Voila! And there you go. Guess what, as well, you're going to be doing the experiment. I, I was hoping you'd say that. Right, what do I need to do? Well, first things first, we need to wear goggles when doing this experiment because the spring has been known to go flying sometimes, so it's really important that we protect our eyes. All right, the goggles are on. So it's a case of don't try this at home. Yeah, definitely not. I wouldn't do this unless under supervision. All right, what's next? What are we doing? So here we have a hanging spring, um, and what you're going to do is you're going to add mass to the spring and measure how far the spring stretches. Uh, the spring stretches because the force is acting on it. Right, uh, so if I'm doing all the hard work over here and the heavy lifting, what are you doing? Well, I've got a graph to plot, Gavin, okay. um, <laughs> and uh, I'm also going to put the results that you give me into the table and then plot these points across here. Um, so when you put on a mass, you're going to need to tell me how long the spring is stretched to, and then I'll take that away from the start length and plot the extension of the spring onto the graph. All right. Uh, so first, I need you to tell me how long the spring is now with nothing attached to it. Right now, it is at two centimetres. Brilliant. So I will add that onto here. And that is our starting point. So obviously, the extension is zero centimetres. Yep. So now, Gethin, can you add one of the masses to the spring? Adding that on. Let me go down. And that is... Why is it called a mass and not a weight? Um, so it's, it's actually the, um, the, uh, the force is the, called the weight. Uh, so masses are pulled down by the gravitational field strength of the Earth. This is six centimetres now. Excellent. So I'll just put that onto here on our spring length of six. So if I take uh, two away from six, I have an extension of four. And if I just plot that onto our graph here, so we have a point there. All right. Okay. Next one. Excellent. So, yeah, add another one for me, please. And this time it is 10 centimetres. 10, excellent. So if I add that to our spring length, if we take two away from 10, we have an extension there of eight from our original spring length. So if I plot that onto here, two newtons and eight centimetres. So our third one now, please. Third one goes on there, and that is 14 centimetres. Excellent, so 14. Two away from 14 gives us an extension of 12. So if I plot that onto here, we've got three and 12. So we've got three points on there now, Gethin. Can you tell me what that pattern looks like? It's a straight line, isn't it? 
Excellent, it is. And that is how it should be. Um, Hooke's law states that the extension of an elastic object like a spring is directly proportional to the force ad, uh, exerted. So how is this applied to real life situations? OK, so lots of people at home might be jumping around on their trampolines at home. The centre of the structure of the trampoline is attached to multiple springs on the outside. When the people jump on it, they exert a force onto it and the force that they exert on it is directly proportional to the distance that the spring stretches.